Don't get old, dude. You got to wear glasses. I just found out today I'm getting ready for Africa. I'm going to Africa in on the 28th. And uh, so I've been shooting a lot. And my left eye is clearer than my right eye. Oh, that sucks. You're going to switch so it up? Like, seeing, like looking at the site, it's like, you know. <laughs> can you can you shoot so, across? Yeah. Can you come instead of here? Can you come That would be across? hilarious. Just get, That's how my wife, my wife shoots a pistol like this and leans her. She doesn't even know it. Yeah. She's always going like that. And I'm like, what the f is that? She yeah. goes, I don't know. I think I've it's seen <laughs> I feel like I've seen I feel like I've seen somebody who did that, but I, they did something weird with their peep. Maybe their peep was up really high. I I don't remember. I think the pig man did that after he got in that wreck. Yeah. Yeah, you might be right. Pig man had to go like left handed or left eye, right handed or something. I mean, you saw Remy Warren, like, he had to use the mouth tab for almost I think it was like freaking two years. So that's another option. You can mouth tab and then just both eyes wide open looking on either side of the riser uh, and just slot. I mean, I can do both eyes. I just, yep. I'm trying to pick up the, you know, sights and I'm just like, okay, I'm like, I'm, I'm going to sh shoot a Cape Buffalo. So I better hit the damn thing, right? Yeah. I mean, they, they got an <laughs> attitude. I right? shoot a deer, ah, I go there and kick it in the head. Yeah. So tell me, so what are you going to do in like, I was curious about this too. Like, any Ashby updates as far as testing stuff goes? And is this yeah? Africa so yeah. Um, next weekend we're going to shoot three or four Watusis in South Texas. They're big freaking cows with huge horns. Yep. And we're gonna do it Ed style. Okay. So gun, like set up the test, find them, blow one down, like next year head shoot it. And then um, test real fast and then get it butchered. Okay. So it doesn't get wasted. But yeah. yeah. Somebody will want the horns too. But we're going to do some of that and we're going to shoot. They're going to retest a couple of the mechs that did okay and got a couple other ones. And then, of course, we'll shoot the Yet Arrow as the. As the test sub, you know, as the as the standard. But what's the bow that so, you? So what's the bow that you guys are going to use for that? Rob's shooting eighty pound Matthews, and I think the Ed Arrow's somewhere around eight hundred grains. I know he has an eleven hundred and fifty grainer that he was hunting hippos with, and then we got some arrows down to six hundred and four hundred, and then we've got different bows. Like, yeah, they're all tuned. For different bows to try to keep it kind of square. Yeah, yeah. Because you can't run a 400 grain arrow on an 80 pound bow; it won't go fly sideways, right? I mean, you could, but that's not the deal. It, I get so. it. it. It is. It's very. Yeah, it's very hard to get that arrow to fly properly. There are guys who can take the time and who can make it happen and understand how to. Yeah, I'm. I had a hard time when I got above 330 feet per second. I had a real hard time keeping stuff under control. So. You know, just probably imperfections in my shot. I just couldn't do it. Do you think you can physically like make that happen? Mm. Do you think it's? Do you think it's? Do you think you uh, as humans are that could be that good? Because I'm playing with a crossbow right now, and man, when you change the vein, change the bolts, that damn thing. The serious bolts sucks. That they're my they're my, you know, sponsor, but their bolts are. Got that we weave on them like the Apollo and the Gemini do, and God, they just go, boo! Like you put a four hundred grain point on it, and it hits low, but it doesn't go left and right. It just hits low, and you just have to change the scope, right? Re zero. That, yeah, that's impressive. I I, I actually wonder because I need to test again. I actually think that the knocks that I was using when I was shooting, I was shooting three D HVs, which are a real light GPI arrow. And I was mm -hmm. using knocks that were kind of the like old school plastic knocks that were a little long, a lot of, yeah. you know, the, the throat's still probably a half an inch from the actual carbon. I wonder mm -hmm. if the new, those AAE IP knocks that are like right on the carbon. I think there was a lot of variation in that. I ought to, I ought to, I ought to give that another shot. Just test them out. All right. So, so give me the rundown again on what you guys are doing. Cause you're doing crazy, crazy heavy, 1100, 800, 600, 400. Mm -hmm. Okay, out of out of bows that are tested, that that like everything's tuned for the for that setup, and do the you, shafts are tuned for it, and we'll walk the spine down and do all that okay, stuff. Okay, right? okay. So I'm assuming that the four hundred the four hundred uh, grain arrow. Are you at a three forty spine with that? Do you know the details? 
No, I do not. We'll have okay. all that in the report. But I would assume there are probably 300s. Um, but I know Rob's got the draw board and like he does all that stuff with the bow and the arrows and bear shafts, everything. And he's super meticulous. Yeah. He sent me a picture before his hippo hunt and there were six bullet holes in the paper and it said, stay calm, kill the hippo. <laughs> it didn't happen, but because <laughs> apparently they're challenging, but um, he um, he's pretty meticulous about that. And we like to at least um, maintain good arrow flight, What's... keep it fair. Cause we're going to shoot, <laughs> mechanicals on the light stuff and probably on some of the heavier stuff we're trying to replicate i think in this test and i'll get more details i think we're just going to try to replicate what average bow hunters do with certain setups you said it before right there's no uh what did soul say there's there's um if there's no perfect off. solution there's only you know there's only give and take yep and um trade-offs so I think we're going to try to replicate traditionally the mechanical guys are below 500 grains going fast. Yep. It's just, Agreed. that's the general thing. It's not a knock against it. It just, you don't talk to a lot of people shooting real high mass and a mechanical. Yeah. I and totally then we're going to try to break some broadheads and we're going to shoot some shots that <laughs> plan B stuff. Okay. We'll do a lot of rib, do a lot of rib impacts. They're kind of open ribbed. They're going to be real favorable. They're big. And um, one of the things that's misunderstood about Ed's test is you can't measure a pass through. Yeah, I've always liked that because that's such an obvious statement when you actually get to the end of this yeah. story. You're like, ah, of course, right, right. Yeah, you can't change the. You can't do six different tips on the same broadhead and the same arrow and the same bow. And if they all pass through, you got nothing. So you need something big as hell to stop it. Yeah. And then that's when three or four inches and one of them shows that's where the Tonto tip came from. Because he had some that were reversed. He did all kinds really? of crazy stuff. Yeah, he had them notched in like this. Oh, that's flat. interesting. Yeah, like a like yeah, a Yeah, super face. needle yep. point. Yep. Right, like a, like a fork. Yeah, yeah. And then, so when you shoot into a huge animal, it stops them. Makes sense. Because you can't measure pass throughs. They don't yeah. tell you anything. They yeah. don't, they don't, they don't tell you anything. So it's gonna be interesting. Some of the quartered in stuff on a big, big animal like that are gonna be interesting. Um one of the things that um I don't even know how to do this. An animal on the ground is pressing on gravity differently than he is when he's on a hook on the hoof. He doesn't move. And I, I, I'm not sure that the um Results are favor more favorable to all broadhead platforms on an animal that doesn't have any possibility of moving. Yeah, by its very nature, I would say, well, you know what? I say that for the broadheads. It certainly does for the arrow shafts because if you've yeah. got an animal that's <laughs> dropping and that arrow shaft is flexing, sure. you know. Right, and button the ass ends going up in the air. So that, may, that changes all the dynamics upon impact. Yeah. Well, but it, it'll be fun. I mean, God, it's going to be so freaking hot. It just got hot. It's, like we've had a really cool summer. It's rained a lot. Mm -hmm. It just hit a hundred yesterday, and down there, oh, not here. It's gonna man. be like hundred and twenty. Oh, and you're gonna it's be gonna around be a bunch of stinky big dead animals. That'll oh, be fun. a thousand pound freaking cow. Yeah, with a yeah. fork lift. Yeah, Damn. yeah, oh. gross. I mean, one of the one of the difficult things about what we talk about in general is testing all this stuff in a in a medium that is like you're like this is an exact replica of what you would do in the field. You're like, no, it's not. Right. It's just not. It's almost impossible to get a true test on like an actual live subject unless you're going to do what you did, which is just go shoot a ton of pigs. And then yeah, you're right. shooting a ton of pigs at 15 to 20 yards. And then you'll get the guys that are shooting elk that want to argue against you because they're like, no, mm -hmm. this isn't the best setup. And you're like, this is a completely different world. Like, yeah, right. Yeah, right. We're just shooting them for targets. Yeah. Well, yeah, 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 well, yeah. And, and you yeah. need like, like I just, the more I've thought about this because ever since, so first of all, for the people watching, I, I put out a video, 
I've been shooting mechan I've been shooting fixed blade broadheads for the last probably four or five years. And Troy, like watching Troy's channel and watching his videos and all that stuff was a uh and then going down the Ashby kind of rabbit hole was really informative for me to just actually start learning about kind of super tuning the bow and super turn tuning yeah, arrows yeah, and yeah. just understanding mm -hmm. the physics of all of this stuff and how it works. And yep. then what I did was basically I hunted with, uh, I mean, I think I went 615 grains and I was shooting plenty far away, never had any issues. Iron wheel typically out front, like heavy arrow, really good components. But what I've done is slowly back down because what I'm looking for is the balance of where do I start to kind of lose some penetration to the point where I'm not comfortable with the amount of penetration I'm, lo I'm losing versus mm -hmm. having more speed to target, which is a little bit of a factor. I don't count that one as very much, just a little bit. Yep. But the bigger issue for me, and I've been thinking about this too, is where I hunt here in Tennessee, it's super thick, tons and tons mm -hmm. of scrub brush. So if I don't have a really good blood trail, I've got to go call the drone recovery guys, or I've got to get a dog, or I've got to spend a lot of time on my hands and knees crawling through freaking honeysuckle that you literally can't see five feet through this stuff. Mm -hmm. Or what I was doing up in Canada, which is the exact same type of thing, just hyper, hyper tight. And so one of the reasons that I said I'm going to switch back to mechanicals is I wanted more blood on the ground. I wanted bigger... Have you seen it? Well, so... You knew I'd ask you that. Yes. Because I yeah. know my average my average distance to blood, and I have a lot of data, 32 yards. Yeah. But pigs tend to haul ass. Like they – now, they go all directions. Like you shoot at one, they're like, how the hell with everybody? And they don't <laughs> right. go with these – like javelinas run together. The pigs are like, good luck, buddy. Yeah. You know, they're like criminals. Yeah, that's <laughs> They come run off in the dark. <laughs> And, but pigs tend to haul ass. I just rolled one up on the last one I shot. I cut the aortic arch off, and I'm getting ready to do it the neck crop scenes. He, he just rolled up. It was, it was amazing. I mean, he went thirty. He went thirty-one yards and literally barrel rolled. But they run really fast. Like you shoot them, they go. Yeah. They don't ask questions. Yeah. So that's part of it. But have you seen? I mean, have you written it all down to see if it's more consistent or inconsistent? Because like, your premise isn't bad. Big holes make blood. I got gotcha. you. Well, and it's also is it, is it paying off? Well, this year, this year it it did. But the truth is, every single animal where I hit them, they would have died with a fixed blade head as well. So, like, I didn't have yeah, any. Right. I didn't have any miss hits. Um, I sent you the one picture of that Grim Reaper Whitetail special that basically had just poked out the off side of one of the does that I shot. So I didn't get mm -hmm. a, a completely full pass through and she dropped super hard. And that's one of the things that I would argue. Yeah, right. She was moving. Mm -hmm. I, I would say that that's probably one of the big issues for the penetration is that shaft gets bent. And that's also one of my, my favorite ed tests that I've ever seen is when he takes that arrow shaft and puts it through a, a drilled hole. And then he mm -hmm. basically, brrr, that, that shaft goes back and forth. And then he puts a ball on the end of it and start swinging it back and forth and then moves the ball forward. And that's, again, just like the physics engineer side of me just really, really dug that stuff. But I, I would equate the reason that that arrow didn't go all the way through her to how fast she dropped. And when yeah, she- Yeah, yeah, no, there's a direct correlation, bud. There yeah. ain't no doubt about it. No doubt about it either. Yeah, yeah. You know, I've seen it a lot and I didn't see that stop happening until 5.50. Okay, so when I started when I started shooting, th this is pre ranch ferry when I was by myself. I dared to get a three hundred spine arrow. I dared to put a hundred grain insert in it, and I dared to put a hundred and twenty five grain broadhead, which was crazy <laughs> to my way of thinking in twenty fourteen. I'm telling you, I thought I was a Martian, and everybody already knows I'm a Martian. So, I I hit five fifty, and I'm talking like cloud the uh, dust clouds behind them it stopped happening interesting the last one i shot because i was elevated at 10 feet and i hit him really low the broadhead hit the dirt yeah like pigs have legs this long right if it was a deer that thing would have skipped off in the woods yeah so there's stuff like that but yeah yeah so, if they duck man it's yeah and then, so, but i also wonder about that argument for the big head is if they duck you're liable to get that aorta in the back 
Yep. And you're, you're more likely because it's gigantic. Right. And so I've, I've thought I about that as well. I can't say that's not true. Yeah. And I've thought about that as well as far as, you know, like the vital V and then you've got lung going back and then you've got liver and guts. And basically just this this kind of zone of like a, a, an if you hit in this questionable zone around the deer. So like if I'm, let's just say that this is the front leg right here. If I hit any of this, I want a 650 grain arrow. I want a heavy ass arrow with a with a, a single bevel broadhead that's fixed because I'm gonna probably at least break through this stuff and I've got a chance of getting them. Now my, my argument in my mechanical video was, what if I didn't want that and what if I wanted a flapper that was gonna hit it and that was just not gonna kill the animal, it was just gonna hit that and stop. And that was like a little just random thing I threw out. I had a lot of comments where people were like, what are you talking about? Yeah, right. And I was like, no, 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 I get it. That's not the reason I'm choosing this. But is it more likely that I hit the animal and the arrow bounces off the animal or doesn't penetrate into the cavity and like single lung him or, and I guess at that angle, um, it, it's going to. So the trouble you've got on that hit, what you are talking about occurring is the, is the shoulder meat's pretty thick, even on a deer and it's moving. So shoulder meat, rib cage. If they start moving, and you know, it's on a, the deer I sh we shoot down here are tiny, but you get a moderate 150 pound deer, you know, average. You get these big fat 300 pounders and you got our deer, 9,500 pounds. Look at that, who's deer? Because they're so freaking hot, they just get skinny. there. I call them Jimmy Buffett deer. But <laughs> like what's that. happening is you have this big compressible piece of meat over the vital V that's the shoulder, not the bone. Yep. Just the meat. Yep. And it's moving. And I think the mechanicals catching it. I I had a schwacker. I shot a 220 pound boar right in the shoulder with a schwacker. And I think what happened, it's supposed to breach and then deploy. I don't think it ever got there. I think it hit this. It was so thick, it opened. Okay. And just it opened it. in the meat. Yep. And it, I mean, it just went. <laughs> it was like. What in the hell was that? Yeah. But like, okay, so if you had a fixed blade broadhead, that shot placement was good enough. That arrow was going straight through and that oh, animal was going to be dead. It okay. smashed him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you've sent me some wild videos, like the one where it, was, where it, hit, the, it hit the humerus, uh, the knuckle and just sparked. That's wild. Yeah. Like. That was one of my buddies in South Texas. That was one of their, one of their cameraed up deer. Yeah, yeah. You know, all that stuff. Yeah. And that, that was a rage. That was a rage and the sparks came off. And then that one that bounced off that sable. And that shot didn't look that shot didn't look like stupid forward. Like that wasn't like I get it if you're up here. Yep. Like if you're way forward, it's gonna be even with a real real arrow, you're gonna break that bone away. That one angle was quartering away. It would have just hit him and that some bitch would have been fine because it's way too far forward. Right. I could not so figure we've out. We've just that. seen some. Yeah. Yeah. I couldn't figure out that video. Like it almost to me looked like they had just played it in reverse. Like the arrow just hit and backed up. Like it looked. Yeah. No, was, that was an outfitter and uh, one of Rob's buddies. Yeah. And the guy would, the guy just bounced it, bounced it off of him. Wow. And then, man, that's... you know, he killed seven more, seven straight after that. Right. It's just, hey man, it's, we're never going to get them all. What are you going to do? when your animals go up in size are you going to go elk hunt or anything this year yeah so i drew a wyoming tag and i'll i'll actually leave in a couple of weeks to go out there to start and i've really been going back and forth but so after killing my stag in new zealand you were just talking about that the density of shoulder meat that mm -hmm. thing on the on each side it was thick hide because i shot him forward in the v and he had five or six inches of shoulder meat yeah. and then ribs mm -hmm. and then through the goodies and then on the offside. So I, I pulled out the iron wheels and I'm going to shoot an arrow that's lighter. So ultra view sent me some of those one K's that they just came yeah, out. I saw with. your post on that. I haven't seen those arrows. Yet. Yeah. So really interesting. Just technically it's a super tight carbon weave compared to the normal mm -hmm. arrows. And they said that basically I've been listening to some of it. 
I, I I can't say enough yet. Like they're wonderfully done. Like they're amazing. There's no glue, extra glue anywhere. Like they really, really well put together. But I don't know if they're great. Like they're expensive. Yeah, right. Yeah, sure. That's yeah. fair. Yeah, you yeah. haven't shot them enough. What no, the hell? No. Uh, yeah, and I I just started literally. So, but I I do think that I'm gonna put on an iron wheel wide single bevel, that's mm. not a vented, um, and I think I'm gonna go do that. But. I'll be with a lighter arrow, so I'll probably end up in the high 400s as far as arrow weight goes. Mm-hmm. And the, because I think I'm still gaining plenty of penetration by going with that head, and I'm still not going to be shooting for the V. I'll take a frontal. I'm not going to take a quartering two shot. But I, I literally every time I've ever had an animal present quartering two, I've always just not shot that animal. Like mm-hmm. I still can't bring myself, I can shoot, I'll, I'll risk a long shot on an animal, but for some reason, but when they're quartering to me, I'm just holding and waiting. And, and I think yeah, that's yeah. just about me knowing myself and knowing the way I like to shoot. So I don't well, know. having discipline is a beautiful thing. Dudley brought that up with somebody or it might've been somebody else. I don't remember. He was talking about somebody who shoots a mechanical for, he's killed a shitload of elk. She's like 430 grains, but he's super disciplined and he gets to hunt like six weeks. Yeah. Well, when you get to hunt for six weeks and you're disciplined and you just say, I know the shots I can make. I'm like, yeah, right. Okay. I'm okay with that guy. But I'm talking about the other 99 and a half percent of us who have seven days and two of them are travel. Yeah. And it's day three and you get a quarter and two at 22 yards. And they tuck it back a little bit and go, God, I hope this works. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's an awful feeling. They're so, going to do it. They're so, going to do it, so, man. Joy, and it's just hard. Okay, but but to me, so like, I'm not even arguing on this, honestly. Because I like to me, it's just about knowing the tool for the the right tool for yeah, the yeah, right Yeah, yeah, I'm job. with you on that. And, I know and then, we talked about that. Yeah, and then, knowing your, and then knowing your limitations. So, but, and you've said this before, and I really respect this, that that's the people you want to reach. You don't need to teach... John Dudley about arrows. Yeah. You don't need to teach elk shaped Dan about arrows. Like you, you don't need okay. to do those that, that. So, but the type of setup that basically like, I don't even know. I don't even know where, do they have to buy in all the way? Do they have to go really heavy and with the, with the fixed blade broadhead Probably three to one? 95% of the arrows we sell are 525 to 575, with, not heavy, heavy. Okay. I mean, that's heavier so than, what's that's happening, heavier than I'm, normal, though. I've sent you a couple of messages from people who are like, yeah, I'm shooting a 400 spawn arrow, 70 pounds. And I asked a bunch of people on different podcasts why I was given that for 15 years. And they just say, well, it's a little under spine. That's not an answer. That's not, that's not an answer. That's just, a, that's just a comment. And it's one of the reasons why I started doing what I did and why I came up with the test kits was... I couldn't figure out a way to help average people who maybe an hour and a half from a shop or they're not. Listen, it's just like mechanics, car mechanics and painters and all the guys you work with. You know, you're good dudes you can go to. You're not going to get robbed. Fair price. They do the work. They show up. They're not drunk. And you fire the rest of them. Yeah. There are shops out there that just don't know what the hell they're doing. And it's just a thing. It's not archery. It's the world. Right. Every service out there. Right, of it, course. It, it's anything. Yeah. So I was just trying to help people figure it out. But yeah, no, we don't. I sell very few people are at 650. But I think that I, I think that this is the other reason, potentially. I think that cost plays a, a much bigger factor in general to the to the rest of the hunting public than it than maybe we even think about. Like, I wonder how many... No, there's no doubt about that. Yeah, like, I, I just wonder if they're going in and you, you, go to a, you go to a shop and you know nothing about archery at all. Like, your buddy is going to lend you a bow because you want a deer hunt. Mm-hmm. You know nothing about the world you're about to get into. You have no idea yeah, right. why you're about to shoot a broadhead three feet over a deer when your field points are grouping at 20 yards. You have no idea. Mm-hmm. And uh-huh. That's right. Yeah, and so they go in, they see something that says rage. It looks really cool. And so maybe you're going to get a little bit closer on there, but the arrow is still going to hit the deer this way. It's not hitting this mm-hmm. way. It's hitting this way. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. But but they're also probably just walking around going, these arrows look cool. I like the color of these fletchings. 
and they may literally pull a bunch of 400 spines out of there. I've seen I've seen guys pull 600 spine lady arrows out of yep. uh, at the shop because they like the way they look. And they were like, yeah. what are you shooting this out of? And they were like, no, these aren't going to work. But I think there's plenty of shops that probably would have just been like, assuming that they're going to go do something else with them and sold them the arrows. And that would be... But I think the, the majority of people that I help, and right now it's 700 messages a month, easy. <laughs> like nothing, like it's all arrows. Dude. Some of that's going back and forth, but every morning I wake up and there's 25 to 30 messages on either email or Instagram. And it's either on people, people I'm helping or brand new input. And I sent you some of the news I got yeah. today said, I'm shooting a 400 spine in the mechanical. I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. Well, I prescribed for him a 300, a 125 grain stinger. And I've got a video on how to uh, shoot your arrows and knock tune fletched. And I said, get a, put a broadhead on. Like just kind of zero, and I don't care where they hit yet. We move the sights, but oh, just okay. shoot groups, right? Shoot for groups, and if they group up, leave it there. And I just I didn't bump in that. I mean, he's at five twenty five. It's not. I rarely I. For, we sell a lot of two hundred gram ranch fairy heads, but God, I mean, the majority of people are just at a hundred grains insert and a hundred twenty five grain or one hundred and fifty grain. That Magnus single bevel has been real popular, but that's hunting public pushing that thing. So I push it too, but um, yeah, but you're still getting into the like we don't have. I mean, you get into five twenty five pretty easily with with a hundred. Right, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. You can get basic stuff. You can go to a. Sh you could go to. A, you can find a hundred grain insert. It's pretty easy. Easton somehow just decided to make heavier inserts. I don't know how any influence on that, but whatever. So that means in the shops, you can actually get 75 or 100 now. Yeah. And get 125 grain, whatever's on the wall. Right. And you're at 525, 530. And that's where I really started to see, like I said, it started shooting through the pigs and there was like a bullet dust behind it. And I was like, okay. Okay. So do you, that's amazing. Do you think that it's the mass or do you think that it's the stiffness of the spine? Because we've talked about that. Maybe it's been a long time, but I wondered about that too, because that was something when you get that that shaft that's that's sweeping in the air when it impacts the animal when you're going up in weight you're stiffening up the spine typically mm -hmm. fairly significantly so do, do you think it's actually the mass that's carrying the arrow through or do you think it's the fact that the thing is staying basically there's no whip out of the arrow or very little whip so i say this to people a lot sideways 700 is not better than perfect 550. yeah vice versa if your 550 won't fly and the 700 does, you know, get your sight gaps open and shoot the bomber because it's shooting straight. Yeah, but I'm still. However, I'm not, I'm not talking the about the mass. The mass carries. The mass carries. Through, it's the only momentum's the only directional vector um, that um, measurement in physics where that keeps things moving. Okay, all right, that makes sense because I, so I knew that about. So it's both. I don't. I think a 400, if you've got a 400 spine arrow to fly with a 400 grain point, I'm not certain that it wouldn't bend like a banana on impact to your point. It's almost both, but super light does not have as much momentum. Yeah. And so for sure, it's a trade off. Yeah. Just, you need both. You really need, you really need arrow flight. For sure, That's where you, you and I have flight. talked about it for a couple of weeks. And it's just aeroflight is so hard. There's it's, zero, zero argument that you need aeroflight. And I, I actually think so like even the guy that you were that you got set up with the heavier arrows and you and you put the stingers out front for him, he mm -hmm. learned some stuff that he never learned that he never knew before. And so like he's on the journey now. And he may he may go crazy down the left road or crazy down the right road, but he's That's now right. going down a road, which is amazing. Like he's learning about, he's going to learn about how to tune his bow. He's going to learn about how to tune his arrows. He's going to, he's going to keep mm -hmm. going, which is like, yeah, I don't know. That's, that's, that's one of the things that like, I'm super thankful for, for Ed and the research that he's done just for me to dig into what I dug into. And then still for me to be like, I'm going to back out of this a little bit. And I, yeah, sure. I'm certain that what's going to happen is one of these days I'm going to be too high up in a tree and I'm going to have a mechanical and I'm going to shoot one right in the blade of that shoulder as he drops down and the and mm -hmm. I'm going to get a little bit of penetration and that deer's going to run off and I'm going to go, damn it. 
If I would have had yeah. my fucking... Well, dude, it's a trade. You're not getting them all. If you do that, then you'll hit one high with a fixed blade and you'll one lung the top of the backside lung and you'll never get them either. It, listen, it's, there's no 100%. It just depends on what your strategy is. And my strategy is all the way through them every time and then let freaking fate. I do not want it. I posted a video that, of a pig I lost. I shot at this pig in December. I wasn't, usually during deer season, we don't get pigs. They wait till dark because they're tired of getting shot at. <laughs> Every time they stick their nose out, some ass has got a 308 and he's popping off at them at 800 yards, right? So I'm sitting there like 45 minutes before the feeder goes, I mean, before dark, the damn pigs run out. And I'm like, well, this is convenient. Well, I had a tree here. You know how it is with cameras. And I had a lot, like it was, he just wouldn't go in the right place and I was just, wasn't set up for a pig. So I'm fiddling around and I draw on his, his broadside and I look at the camera Make sure it's rolling because I've shot three pigs that squealed, ran, and rolled up. Yeah. And I didn't have the camera rolling. Yep. I look at the camera and he turned to me. And I was already mentally right on the crease. And I one lunged him, didn't get him, and I posted it. And you could see it. He was sitting there and he just went like that. And I didn't adjust. Yeah. 16 yards. Yeah. I could have blasted his shoulder blade right out. And I wanted to post that just to say, hey, man. That little, that, he just went like that. And the one I rolled up did the opposite. He was almost real hard quartering away, and then he turned into me, and I was just like, oh, God. Yeah, that's God. a good I mean, feeling right there. Please, baby, that is the way to do it right there. Yep, yep, for sure. So it just depends on what you want to get out of it. And I prefer to just shoot right through them. And I'll tell you what, <laughs> one thing that com constantly comes up is, well, you're wasting all that energy. Skipping that arrow 30 yards past. I'm like, no. That's energy that could be used if something goes wrong. Uh, that's like a that's good perfect okay. hit. That's a good argument. Because I definitely, right? first of all, we've only got, I think we've got five minutes left on this Zoom. I'll send you a new link if we want to keep okay. going. And then I'll just, I'll just yeah. cut them together. The, it, it'll die and then I'll just send you a new link. Um, okay. cause I've, I've definitely said that before too, or, or I've thought about it like, Hey, if we're just transferring all that energy through the animal. So the bear that I shot in Canada this, this year, he was reaching into the barrel and pulling mm -hmm. food out and he just kept doing it. And so I thought, mm -hmm. okay, the next time he reaches that arm and I'm over here, he's all stretched out. And I just drilled him that grim reaper white tail, tail special goes all the way through him puts like a Celtic cross on the far side of him, the size mm -hmm. of a baseball. But does that mean I should have used a turkey head lopper? You know, cause like right. I, I had more energy that I left in the dirt, but mm -hmm. like you were saying, one of the other guys on the trip hit, hit almost the same size bear, a little bit bigger, right in that bone right there. And that arrow stopped dead. That deer, that, that mm -hmm. bear is alive somewhere. That bear's fine. He's fine. He went back, showed his friends, he back and said, Hey man, look at these guys did. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Man, it was, yapping. it was, it was wild to just see the difference. So one of my other thought processes on this is, and we, we kind of touched on it a little bit. If you've got bone here, that's a problem. You've got all this, the rest of this animal, and I wanted to have a graphic and maybe I'll put something up that to me lends itself more to having a mechanical that you've got a wider cut and that you've got. And the other thing I've been thinking about is three blade or four blade versus a two blade, because I've lost yeah. two animals shooting two blades that I'm, I'm just watch the footage back and I'm like, I can see the damn two blade hit perfectly above the lungs and sideways or some variation of sideways and maybe i'm that's what i'm seeing when it's hitting the animal and there were both several broadheads that opened up and passed through now should i have hit them as high as i did no like i should have i should have hit them lower um but that's one of the other reasons that i want to shoot a three blade is because i feel like that also just because of the rotation of the arrow rather than doing a two i want to do a three and i know that my overall cutting diameter i'm going to have more of a hole in the offside than i am going to have like oh a slice. That, when they work dude there's nothing like them i can't tell anybody no on that I, i've done it i shot a black wildebeest right on top of the heart in, a, in my first trip to africa and buried it in the offside humerus with a rage and blood shot four feet out of it 
I bought like 20 of the damn things <laughs> when I got back. I was like, this is the best ever. And the pigs just went, no. Yeah. <laughs> no, the pigs were about 50%. And the bigger they got, the worse it was. So you got up to like a 200, 220 pounder, and they would suck that thing up and just go, boom. You'd never get through them. That's and they're, so they're just their chest wall so thick. Yep. And their ribs are real close together. Yep. They don't bleed real good. They just don't. Yeah. Did you see Josh Bomar's giraffe video? Where? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm assuming that he's 90 or 100 pounds, 30, 30 inch draw, like all the energy you can have. I, I, I need to look up what his specs were for that arrow. But he put the beast, mechanical broadhead, broadside through a giraffe, which is not where you're supposed to shoot him. Well, he got bow. half, about half the arrow in it, which is all I've ever seen in a giraffe. I, but you're not supposed to shoot him broadside. From what I understood with the bow, you shoot him frontal because everybody that I've heard that's gone giraffe, they're like, dude, don't shoot him broadside because everything's just so thick you can't get through it. But yeah. Did, it, did you see where he hit the rib on the onside? He went right through the middle of one of the ribs. It was... That's awesome. It's bonkers. Like... That's not supposed to be the thing that happens. I need to look and see what his, what his arrow set up because there is a chance that he's, you know, 750 grains with, with... I can't imagine it would be lighter than that, but if he got away with it, I mean, I, I don't know what to say. I, I don't know what to say. I don't know how, how many times you can replicate that with other people. He may be one of those people, and I've said this on lots of podcasts, there are people who are exceptional under fire. There are, and then you know, varied skills. Like I can still hit a golf ball 300 yards. You probably don't want to shoot doves with me with my 410 for money. But I'm not a very great field archer. That's why I only shoot 40 yards. I know I'm not. And I just go, okay, I prefer about 15. I'm real good at 15. <laughs> like I'm kick-ass at 15. Unless you're trying to turn so the So I try to get on. everything as close as I can, but yeah. I know that. And right. you're, I'm a man, so I'm not supposed to admit you know, Whatever. any of that shit. Yeah. <laughs> but if you're going to dilute, that's the thing that's so, like, if you're going to lie to yourself about how great of an archer you are, you're yeah, going right. to figure it that's out right. when you shoot an animal in the ass at 30 yards. And mm -hmm. you're going to feel that's terrible. Right. Maybe you won't feel terrible. Maybe you're that type of person. Some but, people just don't care. They just keep shooting them. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> for sure. But you're not supposed to admit that you have any flaws when you're a dude. It's still the third, ground, third grade playground. It yeah. still is. And, um... I've, I've, I've said this to a lot of people, people have, you know, I've helped people and they send me pictures of, oh my God, I've never had broadheads flying, all that stuff. It's intentional. you know, this is a string of try this, try that, da, 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 da. here's your bow, do this, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And uh, when I, I tell them when that stops coming in, I just go to YouTube and go off. Like if I'm, I can't help people, if I can't make a difference, it ain't about me, man. I couldn't give a hoot and help. I'm going, I fish. I love fishing. <laughs> I have 67,000 lures right here. It's so boring. I got to try all those out. It's so boring. My buddy's a custom lure maker, so oh, now I have more cool. lures and I know what to do with. Yeah. I need three arms so I can throw them all at the same time. <laughs> okay, right. so now I want to ask you some questions. Okay, give it to me. How do you um, tune your arrows and get them going? What do you do philosophically? That's Because that's what it is in a roundabout way with results on the backside, how do you, um, what's your tuning process for arrows? Yeah, so what I'll do is, let's say I've got a bow uh, that I already know is, has tuned for other arrows that I know are, you know, whatever they've been working. So I'm not, I'm not necessarily starting from zero because I'm really never starting from zero. Mm -hmm. So like, that's just where I am. Um, yep. What I'll do is go shoot through paper at six feet and I'll get a bullet hole. And fletched. Fletched. Yep, fletched. I build them exactly like I want them. So I'll build mm -hmm. them all the way out. Now, I've done bear shaft in the past and I'll tell you why I'm not, why I'm not doing that. Um, then what I'll do after I shoot through paper is I'll go out and I'll screw on a big gnarly broadhead, whatever I want to, whatever I want to use. Like the iron wheel wide single bevel to me is a really good testing head because it's, Oh, cause it's got a lot of lift, man. Yep. Do not buy wide broadheads. Eh, see, get the regular ones. It's still giving, it's giving me rotation and I can still get out as far with one of those as I'm comfortable 
Well, yeah, I don't know. You're not normal, though. I'm telling the rest of the crew. Okay. Hey, fair. everybody else. Fair enough. If you're, they, just, they if you're do, not really going into a lot of detail, don't buy the wise stuff. They do okay. have, you know what, they, they do. Okay, fair enough. So maybe if yeah. you're going to go with something, but I like a single bevel on a fixed blade broadhead because it actually helps with aero flight as well. It creates rotation. So, of course. Yeah. So, but that's for me, that was a new revelation when I started shooting them. What was I was like, man, these are tuning easier for me. Like I'm I'm getting quicker, I'm getting good groups quicker with the single bevel broadheads. They felt more yes, you are. they felt more forgiving. So single bevel. You know broadheads. what they also do? Uh, and then I'll let you keep going. Right. On impact, they keep rotating. Yeah. Nothing, nothing else does. Yeah, which makes everything sense. Everything else Be stops. Yeah, because you're because the only reason the air the arrow is spinning in the air is air that's going across the fletching. So as soon as air stops moving across the fletchings on a normal standard, you know, double bevel broadhead. Any broadhead. Yeah, mm -hmm. sure, sure. That make that, yeah. so you shoot the broadheads, and do you do you lean cams or how do you make the broadheads fly? If they if they miss, let's say they shoot too big. Let's say they're kind of a roundish shape, but they're not loop-de loops. Let's say they're flying; they look like they're flying okay, but they're not tight. Okay, but but I'll tell you where I typically always end up because I literally just did it today. So mm -hmm. where I end up is I shoot through paper at at six feet, six six feet, and sometimes I'll back up to ten to just kind of see where I'm. Yeah, at verify too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, and then I'll go to twenty yards and I'll shoot. Uh, I'll shoot a broadhead. I'll shoot a field point, and I'm never grouped. I'm never grouping. So like, I'll have a one inch dot on the matrix target, and then I'll mm -hmm. shoot the one next to it. I don't want to. I don't want to bust up my arrows. So yeah, I'll, you don't want to kill. You don't want to hit correct. your arrows. Yep. So what I'll do is I'll shoot the. Um, I'll just verify that my field tips are hitting where I want, and I'm 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 hitting mm -hmm. you know a, a postage stamp at twenty, and then sure. I'll shoot the broadhead, and and almost every time I've done it since. The, for the last few years since I actually got decent at setting up a bow, I've been off three inches, typically max at 20 yards. How, which direction? Any direction? Any direction. Yep. Okay. Yep. And, and so today I was off the broadheads to the right and, okay. and it was to the right and just a hair high. Now the shafts, okay. the shafts that I went from, I went from a four millimeter to a four and a half millimeter. And mm -hmm. so, you know, that that could play a factor. I moved my rest trying to account for it, but there's a chance that I either didn't move it enough or I moved it too far when I moved it just literally just kind of eyeballing. But what mm -hmm. I'll do is I'll take my tape and make sure that I'm not getting too far outside of 13 sixteenths from the, the sure. riser to the center of the arrow of, of the arrow. If I'm getting too far outside of that, I know that I've got to change on the Matthews. I've got to change the cam position. I've got to move it over, you know, on mm -hmm. the uh, Bowtech, you just screw the thing over and it's easy. Like, honestly, if I had a bow tech, I probably would never, ever move the rest. Like I would probably. Yeah. Right. You just mess with the bow. Like they set system on the elite. Yep. Yeah. It, it's, exactly. It's cheating. Yep. It's cheating. Yeah. No. Yep. And the elite, the, uh, the, I had the core, I think it was cure. I had the cure and that was one I had of the, the cure, the remedy. Yeah. Man, they've been. Just yeah. They're great. Beep. Yeah. And that, that Zip. literally, it was just like a little eighth of an inch mm -hmm. turn to lean those limbs was really, really cool. So, mm -hmm. but Matthews and some of the other manufacturers is much more difficult. But if I'm typically close to 13, 16, so I'm willing to probably go out is actually easier for me. If I go too far in, I start worrying about fletching contact on the cables. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. um, today I went out just a scotch. I'm like a 32nd of an inch on my, yeah. on my uh, rest and I'm grouping. I'm good to go. So, but then what I'll do is I'll start backing up because what I'll do is I'll get back to 60 and that's where I actually start really fine. Getting serious. Yeah, Correct. yeah. Yep. I tell everybody to shoot broadheads as far back as you think you're going to shoot. Just 20 don't tell you nothing. Yeah. And, but by the time I get back to 60, once I, once I really know that I'm shooting as tight a group as I can at 60 with the broadheads, mm -hmm. and again, I'm not actually shooting groups, I'm shooting spots that are spread around. Yeah, the yeah, but they're hitting where you're aiming. Correct. Yeah, yeah. Then, almost every time, I'm just able to basically go right back to 100, 120 if I want to, and just as long as my sight tape's good, rock it. And as long as my field points with the resistance they're creating match the resistance that's creating with the broadhead. So like Iron Will, when you buy their field points, 
they've got a bulge in them and it's designed to basically create air a matching Lift. amount of air resistance mm-hmm. yep and so you know that's that's one of those things that gets frustrating if you're trying to tune broadheads really far out and you're like why are these consistently hitting high or low there is a chance that you just that you have a mismatched you know you have a mismatched field point with the with the actual broadhead that you're trying to shoot you um, should shoot broadheads it's hard on targets but everybody should be shooting broadheads a lot they're just not the same device one little pro tip here to everybody you have to realize that when you move your rest you're moving the point a ton a ton a 16th at the rest has 27 inches of air in the front of it because it ain't at full draw so you have taken that air and literally gone like that it's like starting a tile 30 foot run of tile oh. you know just a quarter inch off you're and on the other my, end of your you're foot off speaking because my language it just keeps running it's bad now another thing about moving your rest if you're listening if you get too far out of center around 13 16 what happens is your sights are going this way and your arrow is going to launch off the shot line so what happens is you zero at 20 but at 30 it's still going if you push it out it's still going right-handed shooter it's still going a little left and as you back up it's going to go lefter and lefter it, it can't help it it doesn't just curve back onto the shot line so if you get way out there and it's shooting a bullet hole, you're gonna have you better have pins that can just walk out to the left and you're good. Well, and that would be seen, fine. I've seen guys that'll mess with the axis on the site to mm-hmm. get it to chase down the arrow. It's just mm-hmm. it's so much easier to just and I know that what so I'll, I'll let me let me say this. I'll shoot through my dozen arrows, and every once in a while, I, I say every once in a while, I'd say out of every dozen, there's always one arrow that doesn't behave. Of course. And so what I'll do is I'll I'll start knock tuning that arrow and see if it's seeing if that will basically make it behave. And generally with the quality of arrows that I'm buying, that works. And so like the last batch of Victory uh, Rip TKOs that I bought, they've got this spine aligned thing that, mm-hmm. that's with them. Mm-hmm. And I'd say four of those, I was moving the knock and getting better impact points downrange than I was just leaving them how they were. But it, I had seven, and it's not. Re- it doesn't replicate with my arrows either. With the serious stuff, when they spine align them, you still need to shoot them all because you it's more than fifty percent of right. You should always shoot. And them then all. listen, the manufacturing process. These things are made of millions at a time by linear foots. That you don't even want to know the linear feet. You don't even want to know if you get one that misbehaves a broadhead. Just mark it field point. Just shoot field points and don't yep. worry about it. It'll shoot. Yep. It will shoot. Absolutely. And another thing I do. Um, these are the arrows that I took with Giannis 18 months ago to go nail guy hunting. They're going Cape Buffalo hunting. They have not been shot ever. So I bear shafted them. Yep. I knock tuned them. Yep. I fleshed them. I shot every individual arrow with the broadhead that's on there. They went to the point of impact and I've done. Yeah. So this sounds expensive. But it it sucks when you get one that's got a ding and you don't know it, or the knock's a little wonky, and it happens when you're hunting. Out of a dozen, get your three or get three or four of them that are awesome and put them freaking away. Yep. It's or three or two. I don't care. Whatever you can afford. Like Brandon and I, you know, I have arrows. And just get them. Gotcha. So I have a little bit of advantage there. Got it. If you buy a dozen. Get two or three that are your first ones and don't shoot them. Yeah, like shoot them through the process. Shoot your broadheads. Pull them and done. Sharpen them. Put them up. Do you shoot brand new ammo when you're hunting? Do you label your arrows? Do you number them so that you know? So, not not anymore. Not if if I get one that won't behave. Yeah, it just comes out and I mark it and right. I mark it a different color with sharpie and I know it's a field point arrow. See, and for or me, I'll put a glue on on there with JB Weld. And I can't get it apart. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I know. Oh, yeah, right. that's, that's the people. Oh, yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> so what I what I would do when I was really intense on 
like bear shafting every arrow, I was really going down the rabbit hole hardcore. Mm -hmm. I labeled all the uh, I labeled all the arrows and I wrote on the uh, shaft and on the fletchings when I actually fletched everything out, so that I would know. Mm -hmm. Like number seven, man, number seven's a good one. Like I'm looking at these stats yeah, right. over here on my phone. Number seven just hits good. Number seven became my number one arrow. So that's a, that's another. Uh, the the amount of effort that you go through in this part of the process also says how much research you're basically doing learning about this entire process so like and you learn a lot yeah and if, if you're, you're breaking stuff you learn so much i've spent so many hours trying to figure this stuff out yeah i yeah. mean break i've broken so many arrows and stuff and stuff that didn't work i'll tell you one of the craziest things um i went back through my test kit thing and i was tr what i was trying to do was max foc so i tried to go to a 300 spawn arrow with 300 grains up front mm -hmm. and i can bear shaft it okay 65 pounds 28 inches it's not a i don't have an overwhelming bow yeah i got it to bullet hole and i said "Ooh, magic so i lowered the shaft mass a little bit four to center goes up and i'm going to keep all the rest of it you know single bevel out could not get broadheads to fly i mean they would at 40, they would go, dunk, 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 dunk. And I started pulling the dunk, and it wasn't yeah. the arrow. Yep. It's just a little bendy. Right out the gate, and you got a little too much Two of the bend. releases are good, and the third one's just, you know, a little twitchy. And I put a 250 on, and it just went, hunk, hunk, hunk. And I'm not a good shooter, because I don't practice enough. I'm practicing a lot now because I'm going to Africa, but generally speaking, I don't shoot a lot. And I know that. So that one sucked because, well, that's not true. I learned a ton. Yeah. I learned that when I get messages back, it's common for the test kits to somebody say, hey, I got 300 bullet hole and I got 250 bullet hole. And I said, shoot the stiff one. Absolutely. Oh. I, I still see zero issues. Like I, I know I've seen Dudley post a video where he shot something he said was too stiff versus too weak. And, they, and they, he was like, the groups are wide on each of them. Here's your perfect sweet spot. I have not found a shaft that I can outshoot the stiffer I get it. Like maybe if I went down to a 150 spine, but like the difference for me between a 250 and 300, I will always err on a 250, especially with like the victory arrows. Some of them, the GPI is like point, it's like one GPI difference. It's crazy. Yeah, it's, right. So there's no reason not to stiffen up. Yeah, or or less. So there, there's, in my opinion, there's no reason not to. Yeah. That, yeah. that, that's what I think. And I also think that point, that impact we were talking about where you're getting that, um, what do they call that? Is, is it, it's not paradox. paradox. It is paradox. Okay. Uh, yeah. I call it, well, so it's a mis impact it's not paradox. True. I, I, I coined that term. Paradox is actually the fact that on a real long bow that the, you're shooting that way. Yeah. And the arrow and goes then, around the bow and bends around the bow. That's yeah. called, that's real paradox. Ed laughed at me. He goes, impact paradox. What the hell? That sounds he goes, it pretty, works, but come on, man, pretty, that ain't right. It sounds and pretty good, great, though. Right? He's like, we're letting it ride, but come on, man. <laughs> well, maybe Ed can science <laughs> it up me, a little. He gave me one of his bows when I met him. It's a 110-pounder. Oh. I don't even know how. I shoot a nut out if I freaking try to string the thing, so I just keep it there. It says, you know, <laughs> you just <laughs> love your Troy from Ed. You know, I can just <laughs> exactly the thing. Draw, draw it three inches in the line. I would ever get it rate. back. Yeah. Yeah, the, I've said it on a lot of podcasts that, the arrow flight thing is super challenging. It takes a lot of time. Bows suck because of that. Because I could zero a 300 wind mag and mail it to you, and you could just go hunting. Right. Yeah. Inside of 300 yards, I could mail you a gun. Yeah. Two inches high to hundred, yep. and you could just go hunting. That does. It does boom, suck. But that's and part, blow them down. But that's part of the cool part thing about archery is to me, I feel more connected with both the animal and I feel more connected with the gear because I understand all this and get to make the decisions and choices. So to me, it makes the victories sweeter because yeah, I, yeah, yeah. There's be, no doubt about it. Yeah. Especially if you make your own arrows and fletch them up and you did all the bear shafts and you sharpened your own broadheads. It's super rewarding. Yeah. And that's why I hand, you know, I don't shoot wraps. I shoot feathers cause I'm just, they're, I think, I think feathers are more forgiving. I was shooting veins the other day. I was shooting my arrows with this veins and the wrap on there. Same arrow. And then I put feathers on there. And, That's interesting. Man, 
I've never I've never shot feathers out of anything other than a you know a, a whatever a recurve or a, a stick bow for obvious reasons. Oh, I reasons. love them. I shoot these uh these flat back yeah, a fletches. I've seen them, and they go. That's the whistle of death. <laughs> it's the coolest. <laughs> just right through them. I go to three D tournaments and people are like, "What the hell is that?" <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's 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 so interesting. I mean, you should do some studies on that too, because that like that's been there's been a really big push. I think the last like two years, where there's been some really interesting veins and fletchings that have come out that are a little more innovative. Like DCA came out with something. These new ones that that, that uh, Ultraview just came out. Um, have you ever talked to the Fire Knock guy, the Asian dude? George, no. Bro, if you want to go down, if he will melt your brain for six hours. If you, anybody listening to this, if you get a chance to go hang out with, with the Fire Knock guy, George, he's a, he literally, you just walk up to him, he's real chill, and you start talking about, like, just ask him about some component on an arrow and prepare to sit there for an hour and have your mind blown. Mm. Like the, the fletchings that he was showing me that they make and the arrow, I actually think that from what I remember of his arrows, they're like the one case from Ultraview. I think he had some crazy high weave count on them. And you can you can just see it, like this super tight checkerboard. I'll tell you what was interesting. Before I became sponsored by Sirius, I got their arrows. I met Andy Dutton, the original owner, and he's some kind of engineer guy. And he started going down the this discussion around the arrows and the Gemini and the Apollos are have a weave on the outside. So they're linear carbon, like a gold tip, like you see every day. And then they've got this wrap on the outside. And he started describing how that makes them more consistent because I had been shooting every bear, trying to bear shaft, a lot of different arrows, mostly moderately inexpensive because uh, it was coming out of my pocket. And also I was thinking about average people. Yep. Cause the Gemini's are ridiculously expensive, right? And so I really don't encourage a lot of people to buy them. I tell people to buy Supernovas or the lower price ones and get a lot more of them. But anyway, backing up, they took a lot of nocturnal to get bear shaft, like the lower grade carbon. You can do it. And I've, I've bear shafted a pile of like gold tip hunters. It just yeah. takes time. Yep. I got a hold of those things. I mean, it was like, funk, 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 funk. Oh, that was no good. And then doot, doot. It, they were shooting. And he's like, yeah, well, the weave stabilizes yep. the hand but if <clears throat> damn yeah. oh, 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 sure whatever yep dynamic then, spine the, yeah, you know yeah, yeah. <laughs> yep. i don't know what all that means but that's one reason that like if you have a lot of time maybe going and buying 18 you know gold tip hunters or a carbon express some of the lower end arrows maybe that's fine but for me what i want to do is i want something that's top quality and then, because I don't want to spend a ton of time with it, which is also one of the reasons that when I set up my bow, I set it up based on manufacturer spec, and I and I'm every single time I'm a quarter of an inch away from a bullet, bullet hole when I shoot, and then minor tweaks, and that's just me. That's the way I'm holding it every time. Every time I put a broadhead on, three inches off at 20 yards, minor tweak, back in the zone. Yeah, but you've done it so much now, that's you already what, you know what to expect. You correct. know what you do. That's one of the things I encourage people is I'm like. Okay, this took four or five days. Yep. You shot every day after work, missed baseball practice, you know, and guess what? Next time, it takes half the time. Yep. And next time, it takes half the time. So now, I used to get a dozen arrows, and now that I've seen it, and now that I've seen really good arrow flight, I can't go back. I can't go back in time and go, ah, eh, it's probably close enough. I, I can't. And once you've done it, then all of a sudden, it happens really fast now. If... To those listening, if you are going to bear shaft a dozen, bear shaft four at a time or something. Don't try to get them all done at once. You'll get tired. Yeah. And it's you. Yeah, form you'll starts get, getting bad and bear shaft is form, really you sensitive. Need to, you know, you really need stuff. good releases. If you get some crazy tears, then bullet holes, it's you. Let those go. Keep going. Don't necessarily knock tune just because one tire tears crazy. Yeah. And shoot maybe 20 shots and put them up. Or you're gonna kick the dog and break your bow. And the, the other thing is, if you're new, like this year, if you just bought a bow this year and you've never really shot before, this probably mm -hmm. isn't, maybe you need to give yourself more time to just get used to shooting the bow and get a consistent groove going yeah, yeah. on. Because if you start jumping into bear shafting and you've shot the bow 200 times ever, it's just yeah, going to no, be really frustrating. Time. No, so yeah. like get fat, fl fat fletchings on the back 
and yeah. shoot some field points so that the arrow is getting controlled. But don't, I, don't please don't go deer hunt your first year shooting a bow if you've only shot the bow a couple hundred times. I know that people are going to do it anyway. I know they are, but like, mm-hmm. uh, uh. well, that's what I. I get a lot of people who ask me, like the guy with the 400 spine today, he wasn't a very experienced guy. And I was like, how many years have you been doing this? This is my second year. I really don't know what I'm doing. Gotcha. That's why I went to 300 spine because it was 70 pounds, 27 inches, 300 spine, four fat fletch. Yep. And the only video I sent him was my not tuning with fletch. Yeah. Which it says... If they behave, don't do nothing. Yep. If one of them keep number them all, and if one of them kind of wanders, that you work on that one. If two of them go straight down the middle, just put the damn things down. If you're five years into this, and you know about third axis and all that stuff, I think the arrow piece can really help. A question that came up, I was waiting. The bows at the shop on the wall are not the same, right? Or they come out of the factory, they're not... Or do any of the manufacturers set the bows to a certain spec? I've heard both things. I've heard they're all out of whack. And when they set them up, they put them in whack in your whatever. Like, you're, yeah. you've got a process to kind of get it into whack, right? Right, right. Yeah. So, do they come in? Do so, they come in all over the place or are they pretty square so i would i would argue that over the last few years now they're pretty good consistently there's probably some okay there's probably some brands and it, i would say it's probably some of the smaller brands that don't do as much volume that you may have mm-hmm. some quality issues but i i think that the major manufacturers that most people are going to find are going to find that they're set up consistently from the shop but if your okay. if your shop comes in and because they're going to put the rest on and they're going to put your d loop on and if they put that thing a quarter of an inch too low, you will never get it figured out. You will never yeah, get that right. figured out. And so that I think that- what does it sh- what does it show just for my helping people? If the D loops, oh wow! So if they put the D loop in the wrong place and then orient the rest to it, that's what you're saying. Then it's totally out of whack. Your you will your cam timing like. Yeah, I mean, you think about you're you're trying to draw something evenly yeah, yeah, yeah. so no, these no, are rotating I know the I, same I time. What you're in. Yeah, uh-huh. so you're, you're gonna get, and then so then you'll try to correct. So this is where the it rest. would probably be a good idea for somebody to just at least have a tape measure at their house where they can go. Okay, how how am I like? I'm setting my bow up vertically, and I'm I'm measuring the you know the angle from the arrow to the string, and I'm making sure that it's not a complete disaster. And I can see that the arrow is going through the burger hole there. There's plenty of videos mm-hmm. like Dudley will show you stuff. I've got stuff on my channel that's that's kind of a way back where I did like redneck tuning, where you don't mm-hmm. have to have a bunch of stuff. And you but but what it will tell you is if you need to go back to the shop or if you're just close and you can mess with it yourself. But the, the reality is you can if if you're set up wrong from the shop and it's wrong by just a little bit, especially with where oh, they God, put it's that D loop. Yeah, it's yeah, a yeah, I got you. And you'll never get it. Well, I'm man, the wheels are turning on a lot of bear shafts. I've had a lot of bear shafts expose the bow. And they go to the shop and they I had one guy who was his uh his red his uh sops were out of sync. Yeah. Pl- that all, was it. All the time. So cam cam timing is one of those things that as strings change and strings stretch. Mm-hmm. that there, there it can it can be a thing where one cable you know stretches just a little bit more than the other one or so the serving something happens with it and all of a sudden you're a quarter of an inch out and mm-hmm. every single you'll never time, beat it you'll never ever be able to beat it ever now i i'll i'll literally that i always check my cam timing when i'm shooting bullet holes if i'm getting anything weird at all cam timing is one of the first things that i'm checking it's like a foundational Ooh. base level thing but you got to have a bow press for the majority of the bows. You got to have a bow mm-hmm. press to mess with it. But like you learning and and going to the shop and saying, "Hey, did you can you guys check the cam timing and make sure that that's good? Can you make sure that I'm at 13 16 because what I really want to what I really want to make sure is that if we're moving something, we're moving the cams and I'm not moving the actual rest. I want to try to stay as close to basically that foundation baseline as I can." And um 
Yeah, that's kind of one of those things where once I once I started realizing that those were as big of factors as they were, I can pull out old bows that I've had and, and see just me monkeying around with them and how I've created major yeah, right. issues for myself. Yeah, yeah. Not I get t- I get pictures all the time. People are like, okay, I've shot through the kit. You know, I set the kit up for them based on the draw length and blah blah blah. I'm coming back and every tear is the same. That's a good thing. That means the bow has a major has an issue. <laughs> And you figure it out, and it's going to go sunk. Right. And they'll come back and say, the, one, the draw stop guy was hilarious. He went cam timings on, all that stuff. And he just kept looking at his bow, and he looked down, and he saw a scratch, like, by his, his uh, stop. Oh, so he literally had one of the adjustable stop bows, and maybe uh-huh. his top was set it. Cause the, the bows, some of them have, like, a, you can adjust the lead off. By where it, yeah, where yeah. it stops. And if you don't do those even and you've got your top one set at like 85% let off and then one dunk, at 80. Dunk. Every right, time. Right, it was launching one and then the other. Yep. And but, so he couldn't beat it. But you won't see that with a fletched arrow in field points. Like right. th- if it's minor, you just won't. What you'll do is you'll just adjust. And what you'll see when you're when you're doing your pin gaps is you'll be like, this is weird. Why is this pin? Why are these pins like this here? Because the arrow is kicking in the air and, and impacting. But as soon as you put a mechanical broadhead on there, almost any one with even a little bit of, vein, of fletching of or of, of, of uh, metal that's exposed that's not purely like the field point, you will impact wild, even with a mechanical. And so then if you go screw on a fixed blade broadhead, I hope you start 10 feet from your target because otherwise you're going to put a hole through your garage. <laughs> Did you see the video of uh, Zach shooting that big plastic broadhead? When they were at the ranch, I got little target veins, and we shot that cheap skate or whatever, that plastic broadhead, and he <laughs> shot it at the pig, and it went, and it went straight up in the air. <laughs> I didn't see it. I'll have to go watch that. It went like 30 feet in the air straight up. It just goes, it never hits the pig. It goes like this. It looks pretty good. Yep. And then it just goes, Woo! Yeah. I was like, wow. Yeah. That's yeah. way too much lift up front, right? Yeah, for sure. That's, that's awesome, happens. though. Yeah. Interesting. Well, I can tell you that, that. It's one of the nice things, like I said, the kits have really um, helped a lot of people. And I've learned a ton about bows by the questions. Yeah. I mean, because you the kit from them coming back and saying, it was this. I'm like, I say, <laughs> I literally type in there and say, if you figure it out, I need to know. Yeah. Because the next guy is going to come along and I need 15 different things in my toolbox. Yeah. They don't need a screwdriver. They need a hammer. Exactly. And and that's and, a good indication, though, is if somebody buys the buys the kit, it's also not like this isn't working. The kit didn't work. Throw it in the trash. It's now I got to go get the bow fixed. And once the bow is shooting, mm-hmm. then I can go back to the kit and and figure out what, you know, that's right. what's working. That's right. But I'll say this. I bought the kit and I was able to get everyone to work. But I was able. Why did you why did you try to get a 400 spine arrow to work? I just wanted to see if I could. Okay. So yeah. you, you bent the bow and made it fly? Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, but I'll say this. If I backed up another two feet, then my, my, yeah. the, the bullet hole changed because I can't actually make it work with that. Like I can't actually put 300 grains out front, 100 pound or a 100 grain insert, 200 uh, grain uh, field point and get the 400 to fly out of my 70 pound bow. And I didn't do it with my 80. Mm-hmm. Um, but I could at six feet, but I couldn't at eight and it and I couldn't at 10. It just, I just happened that the arrow was right in the right spot when my feet were exactly in the, in at six feet or wherever I was standing. Mm-hmm. I well, that's one of the things that, um, that'll happen <clears throat> with a flesh arrow. You'll get away with it with a bear shaft. Your form better be good. If you back up to 20 it starts to expose you a lot. Oh yeah. So, but the goal of the, of seven, of, of 21 feet is what I tell people seven yards are in is just to get them all launching clean. And then you let the fletchings work Yep. and do their job, but you do not want to overwhelm a crappy launch and mask it. Well, you will find out. You can't when, put when, any when you put a there, broad head, out. When you put a broad head out front, you can't mask it. Like if, if you put a, a fixed blade broad head out front, you you can be so close to being tuned and you'll hit three consistently three inches right or left, and that's really close, but it's not really it's not it's not money. And then you back up to sixty yards and you're hitting ten inches to the right. Like I used to um when I didn't know anything fifteen or twenty years years ago, I shot muzzies, I just moved my pins 
Yeah. I, I did that and early I, on. And I, I knew that my field points just hit three inches left, and I didn't yeah. shoot 30 yards. So yeah. we're deer hunting in Texas over deer feeders, so I'm shooting close. Sure. I was like, whatever, I'll do this. is my broadhead set for the deer season, right? Yeah, and, and I, I get that too. Like that's – if you don't have a ton of time, but know the limitations of what you're doing because you're shooting you something that's not as well-tuned as it should be. And so you're not getting as much penetration, and it's probably losing a shitload of energy when it actually comes out that way. I, yeah, yeah. Got, oh, there's no doubt. One, it's one, just because it's flying sideways and yeah. kicking. I've got one little story, and then I need to jump. My wife's texting me. So I, okay. I was at an elk shape camp here in Nashville, and there was a guy who had shot an elk at five feet. It had walked. He was he was down a, a, a hill, and there was a trail right here, and the and big bull just walked up, and he and he shot it coming up five feet and he said he got almost zero penetration and then yep. i watched him shooting and i i knew exactly why as soon as the arrow came out of his bow that sucker was sideways and it had mm -hmm. it had almost not that distance i think even with a fixed blade broadhead maybe you get lucky no, and it, it wouldn't work slurps through but his launch was so bad it took so long for those fletchings to fix that uh, to fix that arrow in the air. It was unbelievable. Like I got the slow. And the hard thing back. about that is crazy. your brain gets used to seeing it, but yeah. it hits where you're aiming. Exactly. With a field so you point. You think it's good. And then you go screw I, a mechanical on the front and you never uh -huh. test it. And then you have a 340 bull walk by you at five feet and you drill him in the side and he just goes, ow, and walks off. Yeah. Right. Right. You have bad arrow flight. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yep. All right, we'll get back to the wife and kids. Good I'll talking to you. Yeah, you too, man. Good luck uh, elk hunting. Send me a Thanks, picture. Sir. Yeah, hopefully I will. Have a good one, bud. All right, yeah. We'll see good you. to talk, Troy.